people have been giving Rey a very bad rep for some pretty bad reasons. Most people just say they don't like her because she's too strong, but I don't know. It doesn't bother me. I personally don't really mind seeing a character who is good at things in Star Wars. All the other main characters in Star Wars are really good at stuff. Oh, how come Obi-Wan can defeat a Sith Lord all by himself when his master couldn't even do that? How come Luke is really good at using the Force without getting any training? Sabine is a walking Hot Topic ad. She feels like the forced strong female character. She couldn't be more Mary Sue unless she was also Force sensitive, which at this point wouldn't even really surprise me. Alright, so let me try to spell out fairly for both sides what I think is occurring. And even though I'm going to lean a little bit more towards Cosmo than Mauler, I will give him the benefit of the doubt because the Force issue is very, very difficult. So let me try to understand Mahler's argument insofar as there is an argument that Cosmo sees an issue with one female character, but not with Ray, and that's a contradiction of his position, and his argument is faulty because he's saying one character has too much power, and the other character seems to have the appropriate amount of power, and for Mahler that's a complete contradiction, and that proves his analysis is faulty, and the Mahler analysis is much better. But when we actually look at the edited version that he's giving us and the visual images, they kind of confirm Cosmo's arguments, so I don't see a major issue with the argument. But the contradiction is presumably that he's not really being consistent in terms of force powers should be measured in a certain way. But Mahler never bothers to tell us, well, what is the objective rule here, or what is the objective constraints? He seems to keep hinting at, it's just obvious that J.J. is violating, quote-unquote, the rules, but he never really proves it. He never gives us, well, how much powers would be too much power? What is exactly the cutoff point? We just don't know. We're just given a lot of, she's this, she's that, but that's not even supported in the actual text. She definitely has a huge amount of flaws, and she can't just do whatever she pleases. It's not like Ray can just, quote, fly in The Force Awakens. He just can't just snap her fingers and wipe things out of existence. You can't just shoot laser beams from her eyes. So from that level, it's not clear what the argument is. It seems that for her level of experience and in the point of the narrative, she has too much power. But then we get to something like Darth Maul in the Kenobi fight, which I think is a great paradigm case. It shows, yeah, there's a real problem, but not with The Force Awakens, but more with Phantom Menace and some of the other films that force levels are not really spelled out very well. But how do we know this is an issue and not Ray? Well, there is actually a way out of this impasse, because it seems to me one can fault both Cosmo and Mahler for just, well, I like this and I don't like that, and so both just are giving a subjective argument. They're just wording it differently and they're just using a different visual style, but they're not really providing evidence. So let's go with just a Maul Kenobi fight and work through that. Well, there actually is a reason to think that there is an actual big plot hole. We're given a lot of evidence that Maul is incredibly focused and obsessive and wants to win the battle and is very dedicated as a warrior. And we do have, quote, reasons to, you know, think there is something problematic in the way the Force is being portrayed because we have supporting evidence. If we read, for instance, the Darth Plagueis novel, it's still stated very, very explicitly that Maul from a very early age was trained to be a fighter. So him being incredibly well-versed in fighting and able to wield the saber is, again, comparatively going to be much, much greater than Obi or other uh, Force users. So we do have reasons to think this doesn't make any sense. How can Kenobi win if Darth Maul is much better trained and can use the Force more effectively? But now let me slide to George Lucas for a minute because I think he would say that you're missing the point. The point is not really the fight itself. It's the director's responsibility to do a good job showing that, but the point really wasn't to have a great fancy battle. That's only for a very simple-minded part of the audience. The point should be that Kenobi, quote, wins, but the win is a defeat. In other words, him using against the violence against Darth Maul is a defeat, right? Because he's helping to militarize the whole atmosphere, and that it's kind of a paradox that by winning the war in The Phantom Menace, they sort of kick off the dynamic that, that we're going to see later played out in the whole prequels with Sidious sort of taking advantage of this rise in tensions to destroy the Republic. So we're not necessarily supposed to see the, quote, 
killing of Maul as a good thing. We're supposed to see it like, yeah, this is the disturbing use of the Force by, again, someone who should know better. So there's a kind of weird victory and defeat of both this kind of Jesus-like character defeating the devil, but he uses violence. That's the point of the fight. It is not really about force levels or getting something very precise about the saber fighting. That's nice, that's interesting, but the point is a symbolic point. But somebody could still answer back that you are creating a big problem because if the force isn't, you know, being used correctly, or at least you're not paying attention to some constraints, we're going to be left with a major problem that we don't know where the limits of the force are. So the symbolic message, even if we like it, and I don't like it, by the way, I don't think it's a very good symbolic message, leads to a lot of problems because we're now we're not going to know later, the most obvious place would be the Anakin Kenobi fight with Revenge of the Sith, well, wait a minute, why should we take that seriously when you weren't really paying serious attention to the dynamics in this one? And again, we're kind of stuck that, I think in this case, Cosmo is right more than Mahler, but both of them are just relying upon their subjectivity. But we do have a way, working through the evidence carefully in the prequels and the extended universe, to say, yeah, there's a big plot hole here. But again, the director, that's the style of the film. That's the point and premise of the story. So we've kind of got a big impasse. We can either say, well, it's all Swiss cheese. All these films, all these stories don't make any sense. They're all stupid. We can just walk away from it. Or we have to do the best we can with it and say, yeah, it's Swiss cheese, but try to harmonize the stories as best as possible. And from that angle, Ray is a very minor issue. Uh, the Maul Kenobi fight is a much more a major issue, but there's no easy way out of it because as far as Lucas is concerned, that's canonical. That's the way I filmed it. I don't care if it's a contradiction. Uh, but I do think both Star Wars experts and fans should be concerned that is a contradiction because it is going to have a big effect on later stories. So I think, again, Mahler is improving his point, but I do think here he's, it's much more an honest issue here of how do the force levels work, and I have to, we have to both be honest and say it's not really very clear, but it's not clear why or how Ray being a Mary Sue is going to help resolve this much bigger controversy. All right, so this is, this is it again for... The continuing issue with Cosmo. All right, thanks for listening. If you like the content, please hit the like button and/or subscribe.